Hey, Matt, get in the car. We're on our way. All right, are we going to the car wash first, or? Jeez, where? Matt, it's like minus 21, so just get in the car. We got places to go. Okay, well, I'm hungry, so I'm gonna okay, hop Okay, good, let's do this. So bakery first? Bakery first, and All wait right. till you see where we're going. So where are we going first? We are going to Serrano Cafe. So is the it pretty much the um, the kids of the Serrano Bakery. So it's a bunch of generations um, of Greek family, and they just opened this super cute cafe. But they're serving all the amazing different uh, baked goods from Serrano Bakery. Head on in, bud. Serrano Bakery has great Greek treats that pair nicely with an espresso, frappe, or coffee. We were mostly in the mood for honey balls, otherwise known as Lukomadis. I think I butchered that. I've got the goods, let's do this. Okay, let's get this down, let's drive safely, and let's figure out exactly the best way to go with Google Maps. We are going to Frenchman's Bay. This place is right on the water, so it's gonna be super cool. Now that we got our next destination set to port in Pickering, it's time to chow down some nice Greek treats. Spanakopita and Greek honey balls. You know, it's like, it's got a flaky, nice flaky, crispy, mm -hmm. buttery inside. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the spinach and just the feta, like everything about mm. that thing is just full of great flavor. Mm. But I wasn't joking about that. Honey ball time. Uh, oh, there you go. Beauty. Oh, and look, they're dusted with cinnamon. So you've got cinnamon honey balls. Mm. <laughs> Happy now? I just love it. Oh, it's just the contrast. Oh my god. <laughs> Stop. So having cocktails and making a pizza for ourselves, that's going to be good in a wood fire oven as well? Yep, so they, they brought in an incredible oven from Italy. It's supposed to be over the top stunning. Jesse Valens, who's the executive chef of both places, an incredibly talented chef in his own right and believes in making everything from scratch at every restaurant he works at. So this is going to be incredible that way. So we're talking scratch made dough, scratch made sauce, scratch made sausage for our pizza. Oh my God. So it's, it's as scratch made as it gets. So that's gonna be really fabulous. Jesse Valens is gonna tell us about his pizza making process here at Port using their wood fire oven. So our pizza dough, we, we make in house. Uh, very simple dough, we, we buy a, a very specific pizza flour and we add in salt, yeast, water and olive oil. Uh, we make the dough and we let that ferment for 48 hours just to get the, the proper flavor and, and texture and sort of stretch that, that we want. Um, so we're making a batch of dough every day to be used two days later. And so once that dough is, is ready to use, we use it that day and then if we don't use it for, if, if we doesn't get used for pizza, it'll be used the next day to make flatbread or something else. We wouldn't ever use that for, for pizza because we need that specific stretch that only comes after two days. Now it's up to me and Joanna to try making a pizza of our own. So, so press from, press from the outside, the usual way. It's a little stretching, a little pressing. I love the feeling of this dough though. It's super spongy, but it's not so bouncy that it has too much elasticity to it. So how did Sam get it so super? Show me the next step. Now you fall into the stretching. Okay. And make sure you keep up with that flour. Because we don't want it to, to, to stick. We'll start stretching. So stretching. You can see this dough is like super fresh and super gorgeous. How do I get it thinner? Just keep pulling? Yep. Alrighty then. This is like quite the workout. I'm scared that it's gonna be too skinny in the, in the middle. I have to throw it in here. I have a hole in it already. I have a hole in it. I don't think I can throw this in the air like Sam did. I don't think I have that much talent. I know I don't, and I've already made holes in my pizza. <laughs> See, terrible job. I know you're supposed to catch it under your hands, something like that, but <laughs> I'm now wearing my pizza until all that sauce covers almost to the edge. Then we're going to do a nice sprinkling of the dry mozzarella. I'm gonna take all these little half balls that are over here and put some fresh mozzarella around. This is my favorite stuff. I could eat this cheese morning, noon, and night. When I was in Italy, I learned how to make buffalo milk mozzarella. It was such a treat. I wanna smell this. 
Oh my God, that pineapple is so gorgeous. So again, let's do a little nice little sprinkling. Let's get some evenness, a little bit everywhere, because you want everybody to have a bite. This ham is crazy gorgeous. Just separate that a little bit out. Jess, what do you think? How's that looking so far? And now we're going to do these because you can't have a pizza without some heat. Just wouldn't be right. Alrighty then. That is what? pretty close. We'll just do a quick pull. Whoop. And there we go. And in the oven, this baby goes. Let's do it fairly quickly so we can land it in the center. Woo! Good! So you're not supposed to jump. Dust. Pizza's supposed to Yeah, let's uh, start decorating ours. Let's okay, do it. here you go. So it goes right up over here. Yeah. Okay. Then you just roll it around on the outside, yeah. Beautiful. Mozzarella. Some dried mozzarella. Okay. How about half of a ball? Oh, here? And break it up. This one, then. Yep. Okay, so just take, half rip half. it. Yep. Rip it in half. And then break it into pieces and put it wherever you want. This is my favorite part. Just throw it on. Let's just go. Go to town. Look at that. And that's doing mighty fine. I love this. Okay. All right, and then pineapple. Yep. Oh, this is. People say pineapple doesn't go on pizza, but you know what? I Does beg today? to disagree. It will today, and it will be enjoyable. I Ham. love that combination: salty, sweet, the yeasty bread. It's all great. Look at all that gorgeous ham. You just have a taste of that. It's not bad. You think so? Yeah. It's fine. No, it's really good. Whoa! Yes, hang on. Here we go. Here we are, this man. Let's do this. You good? You're doing great. Now while our pizzas are cooking, Jesse's going to tell us a little bit more about Port and its location. Um, we're very short drive from, from Toronto, we were to about 20-25 minutes, and you would come here and be on this patio and you would never know that you were in Pickering. It almost looks like you're in cottage country. Uh, especially, you know, all year round we, we have a great view, especially in, in the summer when it's green and all the trees have, have all their leaves and you're on the water and boats are going through. Like, it's, it's a really beautiful place. You really could be anywhere in Ontario or say like, you know, the eastern side of North America for that matter when you're here at port on the patio. It really, it's just like being transported to, to a different place. We, you know, one of the reasons why we have windows over two thirds of the, the area here is because we want people to be able to enjoy that view. Now that our pizzas are out of the oven, it's time to garnish them with a little bit of Parmesan. There's cheese. nothing I like more than Parmesan. No? Now these pizzas are gonna be paired with a drink. For Joanna and Jesse, wine, and for me, a nice IPA, because you can't really go wrong with pizza and beer. One thing I like to have with Hawaiian pizza is, is a nice fruity IPA. What we have here is Second Wedge Brewery Three Rocks IPA. They're local or local area. They're from Oxford, Ontario. We really like this beer. It's nice and fruity. It's got some tropical fruit notes like pineapple, mango, uh, some nice piney bitterness to it. Kind of cuts through that richness. Uh, carbonation, kind of, kind of through the richness of the cheese. Really great drink to have with a, with a, with a pizza, and specifically the Hawaiian pizza with ham and pineapple. Now it is finally time for us to try our pizzas. You, you guys did, did well. It doesn't look exactly the same, but um, I think at the very least they're, they're, they're going to be edible and probably taste pretty good on top well, of that. there you go. Jesse says our pizzas are edible, Matt. Yep. That's pretty amazing. Is, it's a little, it doesn't fill out the whole plate though, mine. <laughs> yes. Yes, but it's got a thicker crust, and sometimes that's not a bad thing either. Yep. Yeah. So let's dig in, guys, and let's have a taste of these okay. pizzas that we made, because I'm pretty pumped. Right. Cheers to you all. Wow. Oh, yeah. cheers, cheers to pizza. Cheers you to pizza. You can actually fold. Mine is just going to... Sorry, nice spell. Mmm. Oh, I'm loving that. The heat, the sweet, the salty, the savory with the tomato. That little bit of fresh cheese at the end. I gotta say, I'm a pretty good uh, pizza chef. If you'd like to follow Joanna, I'll leave a link to her Instagram down below in the description. And that way you can follow us on more fun adventures and food tours for next time.